Joining us now, one of Smollett's attorneys, Patricia Brown Holmes. And this, Patricia, first of all, welcome and thank you for being you. here. Just after seeing you, at 26 in California speaking right after this. This has truly surprised everyone. How did this happen? Um, well, we were trying to um, appear in front of the court uh, and not have this be something huge mm -hmm. um, because Jesse has never had an opportunity to speak out and tell his side of the story. Um, but the police department and others have had an opportunity to speak out. Mm -hmm. he, Do you consider him talking to Robin Roberts, speaking out, having a chance to speak um, out? You know, that was early on when he was first attacked. Mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't know the criminal process. He has no idea how investigations take place. Um, and then all of a sudden, there's information out there that he has no idea where it's coming from. So he speaks. He's not, you know, being advised by anybody. Uh, and then but he all didn't have attorneys at that time. Well, not advising him. They, those were entertainment lawyers. They were not lawyers. Criminal to he, advise he actually did him have a criminal defense criminal. attorney at that time, though. He had a, well, a very he prominent one. Criminal defense attorney who lives in California who um, came to Chicago. But there was also a Chicago-based criminal defense attorney, Michael Monaco. That was with him. You know, I don't know anything about Michael Monaco representing him. Uh, all I know is that when I came on the case, I sat down with the facts. I looked at the case and um, a asked a bunch of questions. One of which is, what information was being fed to the police department such that all of a sudden? rather than being someone constitutionally who is innocent until proven guilty, mm -hmm. he all of a sudden is being tried in the court of public opinion. Did the Osendero brothers attack Jesse Simulat, according to your client, according Did to they Jesse? Did they attack him? Are those uh, the people he's identified as? As far as I as know, as they have said they have a, that they did attack him. Does as far he believe as I they attacked him? I don't know if he believes they attacked him. He did not see and know who the attackers was. It wasn't as if he says, oh, you know, hey, you attacked me and I know you. He didn't know. But he did make the point that it was a racially motivated attack when he was describing it initially. And there, he says he never said anything about a MAGA hat. He said that they said MAGA country. He, he also, it, it's unclear whether he ever said they were white. But he, at this point, we do know that he says he was attacked by people based on race what how could how how now that this is all over how should we believe him because the individuals who testified and who said that they attacked him said that they said the things that he heard but these are people it's, known to him okay so your friend is known to you your friend decides to do something that you don't know that they're going to do all of a sudden you're guilty because they decided to do something to you but wouldn't he be able to People immediately have been identify raped by their them? boyfriends oh all of a sudden the boyfriend's not a rapist wouldn't, i mean you know i know i understand that but wouldn't he be able to immediately identify them to police and that, that first night not necessarily. I mean, if you're walking down the street, see, it's, people love to second guess an armchair quarterback. That's not what criminal law is all about. There is a constitution that says you're innocent until proven guilty. It is not guilty, oh, go get the evidence to show that you didn't do it. That's not how it works. The state has the burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt. It is their burden. The police department has the duty and the responsibility to investigate, not to say, oh, I don't believe you, this is some crap. Investigate. Don't go look for facts to support the view you have. Look for information but they're to the ones who found the, the Osendero brothers, to support though. the facts. But they're the right. ones who found the Osendero brothers. Right. But then all of a sudden, when the Osendero brothers come up with their story, all of a sudden, everything flips to support them and not to look at Jesse as the victim who was beat up and say, OK, let's have a conversation. Let's see what's going on here. So why not have a day in court to vindicate him? Why not present all the evidence? and have the day in court. Because why would you need a day in court when you didn't do anything? Why not have your case dismissed if you're, ca if you're innocent until proven guilty? You don't have to have a day in court. Why have a day in court? And a day in court means 
that the process was fair, that you have not been, there, there are Supreme Court rules on this. Mm -hmm. You're, you can't try somebody in the court of public opinion and then say they're gonna have a fair trial in front of 12, um, a, a, a jury of their peers if the, you know, everything is tainted before you even get there. Tell so me how that's So then all of the evidence fair. that Eddie Johnson came on with a press conference and said and gave to prosecutors and all of the evidence that prosecutors have, obviously, as of today, they felt it was not enough to take this on in court? I don't know what they thought. You would have to talk to the prosecutors. Because what's, what's happening here is people are taking two things and they're conflating them, right? So okay. as a prosecutor, and I've been one, right. at state level, city level, and the federal level. I've been a prosecutor. I was fair. I was impartial. Um, I was tough. Mm -hmm. um, but I was also true to the spirit of the Constitution. I would let an innocent man Go, a, a guilty man go free before I would put, uh, I, I'm sorry, I would let an, a, a person who has committed a crime go free before I would take someone who I thought might be innocent. I don't know if I've got enough evidence to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. I'm gonna let you go. I'm not gonna try and throw you in jail just because I can or win a case just because I can't. That's not what the prosecution should do. I think what's so incredibly confusing for a lot of folks is that you have so many different sides to this story, and you're and I get that, but then we the charges, 16 charges, have been filed. They felt like obviously they had enough evidence to do that. So what led to this turn of events this morning that all of a sudden an emergency hearing was called and everything an just emergency. went away? It wasn't an emergency. Here's the deal. Um, when you are dealing with a criminal case, it, you're dealing with people's life and their liberty, right? So you don't want to wait 20 years for that to, to play itself out. Here's a young man who has a career, he has a life, he has a community. He wants to get on with his life. There's no reason to wait until April 17th, which was the next court appearance that was on file. If you can get in front of the court sooner than that, to, to have a just result entered, then that's what you do. And you do it for every client, not just one client. That's what the prosecution does when they're being fair. And in this case, the prosecution saw no reason to, to uh, you know, wait until the 17th. Um, we absolutely saw no reason to wait until the 17th. So we petitioned the court. It was not an emergency motion. We petitioned the court to advance the case, that's the technical term, advance right, the right, case to today. Um, and, and the judge to, was able to advance it and today. And he advanced it to, the day, to today. The prosecution then made a motion to nolly pross the case, which is to dismiss the case. We made a motion to seal the file, which is typically done in every single case like this, where you don't want people all, you know, going to get his court file and going to get the court file. So record. in this process, did you guys know that that's what they were doing this morning? Is that part of the court process? When they call and they want to advance the hearing because it was set for the 17th, you knew at this point that everything was... So what... I, I'm, I'm curious about these conversations between both sides to come to this agreement today. Well, conversations like that are, are not public conversations, right. right? I'm his lawyer. I'm negotiating with them. Uh, they're the prosecution. They're talking to me. We're both, you know, talking about our case. And, you know, we arrived at this resolution, which we both thought was the right resolution. Do you feel like the alleged attackers are still out there? Well, the, the, you see, that's a loaded question, right? Alleged attackers. I know that there are two people who said they attacked him, so mm -hmm. I don't view that as alleged attackers. Mm -hmm. If you admit that you did it, well, they, if they admit they attacked him, they're not alleged. We well, know I think they are. admitted that they were with him that night. I don't know that they had admitted that they attacked him so much as that they, that they conspired with him is what they admitted to. Well, so the I don't the know question, about that. Well, both uh, the mayor and the police superintendent called this a deal between Jesse Smollett and the prosecutors. Would you characterize it as a deal? Um, I would not characterize it as a deal. I would characterize it as the prosecution doing the right thing. They did what they believe, given the totality of the circumstances, was the right thing to do in this case. We should be applauding them for having the courage to do the right thing, despite all of the, the back chatter, you know, the chatter that goes on um, in the backdrop. If we were to allow Twitter and, and Instagram and Facebook to try every case, you would never have a fair trial, ever, ever. It's why grand jury proceedings are secret. The grand jury met, um, the grand jury indicted, the, the prosecutor um, 
presented evidence, and we don't know what that evidence was that the prosecutor presented, but whatever it was, they came out with 16 counts. Let's assume that they decide later on, before the indictment goes out, oh, we've got a flaw with the grand jury. We don't want this indictment. Th the prosecutor ought to be able to dismiss that indictment without anybody in the public knowing anything about it so that the individual who is impacted by that can live their life and not have, uh, you know, this stigma attached to them. We're all Chicagoans. How can we feel that we haven't been snuckered here? Well, I can say this. If there is anybody in this room who believes that if they ever get caught in the judicial system, that they should not be treated as if they are innocent until proven guilty, that they should be treated fairly, that they should have an opportunity to be heard, particularly if they are, they are a victim, then we're in trouble as a society. That's not snookering someone to treat them the way our Constitution says we should treat them and to give them the rights that they are required to have in each and every case. Trisha, I don't know if you saw Eddie Johnson and Mayor Rahm Emanuel's comments because you were probably in transit on the way here, <laughs> but they had some very, very strong words, whitewash of judge, uh, justice. What would you say to them because they are not happy with today's ruling? Well, you know, they are not my client. Jussie is my client. Um, the state and the prosecution. And they even said that Jesse Smollett, even despite all of this, still owes the city of Chicago an apology. You know, I, I, so every rape victim that we have, we're going to go and charge them money because we had to investigate their case? I don't think so. Um, Jesse Smollett, uh, well, he didn't even call the police. Actually, somebody else called the police. That's a fact, right? Um, so the police come, they investigate. He doesn't know what happened. You know, he's telling them what he's telling them. You know, I can understand that the police are upset. I get it. I have plenty of friends who are police um, um, members or members of the police force because they're male and female. They do a magnificent job. Detectives do a magnificent job. When I was a, a state uh, prosecutor, you know, those were some of my best friends and I trusted them and I know that they looked under every rock in order to make sure they had the right evidence so if, if, you know, I get and I understand that they may not know and understand all the background and all the facts and why this case ended up being dismissed, but I'm sure that once they talk to the state, then the state will explain to them whatever it is they want to explain and, you know, move on. That's, is it protocol that's that they don't client. tell the, or do, do they have to, or is that a courtesy to inform the police no superintendent? Idea. No idea you don't what know their that process, process mm. that, that's their process, that's their protocol. I, you know, I know that Kim Fox is recused and is not a part of the case. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know, you know, who is communicating with whom. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, somebody said to me that um, the mayor was saying something about the grand jury. And I, you know, and my response to them was, that right there says to me that there's not enough information going around because the mayor would not have access to the grand jury because the grand jury process is secret. Nobody has access to well, that. Well, you just said the grand the jury indicted because that's that's public. Okay. The grand well, jury I, indicted your client. That's not what was told to me. So I. Right. I yeah. Well, okay. but the point is, there's a lot going back and forth, right? And and the information is not correct, which is why you don't have a trial by media. You have a trial by jury, and it's why you have a situation where prosecution is kept. Um, under wraps until the prosecution brings their trial to court. That's when you hear the evidence. It's supposed to be like that so that you don't have people who have made up their mind. I've already had email from people saying, you know, this, uh, you know, they, they've got really strong opinions one way or the other. They don't have all the facts. There are plenty of facts in this case that nobody has. Everybody doesn't have all the, the information. Did. Though police had, maybe, police maybe had not. evidence. It was some, but, but but how did they get those guys context. if they didn't have if they didn't have evidence? Out of context, right? Out of context. What out does that context. mean when you say out of context? So you know, I could give you a glass of water, and if I don't put it in the context where the water came from, you might assume it came from one place because that's what you think. But then turn out and learn that it came from someplace else. So it's right? because the person doesn't ask. I don't ask you where did that you don't water ask come where from. Like this water sits on my desk. You assume that that you're 
person who always brings the water puts it here, but maybe he was out, one, a member of the audience picked it up and put it here. You don't know, but you walk in and you make an assumption because that's what always happens. But when you're we wrong, trust but that they the had detectives... video evidence that they that they presented already to in the public. I know right. to your point, to your point you, that, that you know was out in public, but they presented video evidence and they followed these guys backwards in terms of from the time that they were with at the attack scene all the way backwards to buying the rope and doing all the rest of that. And so was this, Jesse with them when they bought this rope? No, he no, wasn't. No, no. Was he with them when, when all of this? So will they then no, face not. charges now, the Osandero brothers? I have no idea. I'm not the prosecutor. What have you heard? I know you're not the <laughs> prosecutor. I want to know what you heard. Y'all talk. You just said y'all was all friendly after hours. I watch Law & Order SVU. I know how this works. <laughs> Okay, See, and that's I know. The People watch so much television, they think they know what happens in real life, and that's just. Well, that's not why I'm true. asking. That's why I'm asking. I don't know. Here's I don't thing. know. It, it, but you know. I gotta imagine, professionally and colleagues, you can help us understand. You you understand how for us, you know, people keep saying, "Oh, well, the media said this." Well, the media's just giving us what they know, and we come to our right, own conclusions, right? right? But right. how do we decipher this? How do we figure it out? Because I sometimes feel like I'm still confused. Well, but here's the thing. Maybe it isn't for the media to figure out. It is for the... Well, they're just giving they us the information. The point. And then it we... is for the police and the prosecution to first figure it out. And then the media learns as they let that information out. Because then that information has been filtered through the grand jury. It has been filtered through their tests to make sure that they understand that information, believe the information, have support. That's why you need evidence, right? So so then if the media is fed on the back end, not on the front end, it's not fair. It's not fair if I sit here and I accuse you of something for me to go to the media and say you did it and then have everybody report it that you did it and then now you have to well, go to trial. I don't think the media necessarily said he did it. I thought they gave us what they were learning as the case was developing and then we kind of came to our own conclusions based on what we were hearing and what we think and what, what we want to process we, it. Which shouldn't have happened, right? Because well, that's it was human not, nature. It had, yeah. And that's the problem. That's human it nature. It had not been tested through the grand jury process, right. through the investigation right. process, and then the indictment process. I know we got to hit a break. We got one last. What is next for him? Can he recover? Jesse Smollett? What do you mean recover? I mean, he didn't do anything. So he is... I know, but his, his we, reputation has his, been tarnished. His let, let me just tell you, if his reputation does not come back, if he is not allowed to do everything that he was doing before, that's a problem. Well, he was written off the he, last two episodes, so, well, I mean, obviously I, you know, things were know, happening. I don't know how that works, but, you know, I've seen so many people come back from the dead in a right. TV show. It's crazy. <laughs> so, you know... Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, but I'm saying we know. do know that... The producers and the creators have written him off. So, I mean, obviously, there was some impact and repercussions from just this part. But let me just tell you, he is so hot right now. If they write him off, they don't want to make money.